Russell, CEO of Redwood Materials and former chief technology officer at Tesla, along with our very own Phil LeBeau. Great to have you guys both here. Phil, kick things off. Thank you, Kelly. JB, uh, I know you just made the announcement regarding the $2 billion loan, and I think the big question a lot of people have is, with this loan, how much will it, it accelerate the production of the cathode and anode materials needed for battery cells here in this country? Well, thanks, Phil. It's, it's great to be back here. And, and this is incredibly helpful uh, to accelerate these projects. These are very capital-intensive projects, and uh, we're in a competition with Asia to ramp this up and to bring these uh, supply chains and these manufacturing operations back to the U.S. So having the strong support, the, the continual support, and a strong industrial policy from the U.S. government, the federal government, um, is, is pivotal, and this will accelerate us. You know, most of the raw materials in the battery cells that are manufactured in this country, they're coming from Asia, coming from overseas. How quickly does that change? I know you're working to change that, but realistically, when will we see more sourced here in country? Well, we're, we're having an interesting uh, project here where we blend recycled material, which is essentially almost urban mining. We're able to incrementally add new sources of these raw materials, these same critical materials, copper, nickel, lithium, cobalt. Uh, from products we already have in the country, and we can mix that, we blend it, with sustainably mined material. So this is already beginning to ramp up, but we have a long way to go. Um, the U.S. Uh, battery demand and the EV demand is, is growing at a phenomenal pace, which is great to see, but we have a long way before that supply chain is uh, predominantly you know, moved to the U.S. And as you know, J.B., this is the main reason why EVs are so expensive. For automakers to be profitable on them, they've got to make up the cost of the battery packs, the battery cells, which are so high right now. When does that price come down? Are we looking 25, 26 when you can say, okay, we see more affordably priced EVs in your opinion? Well, I, I, I think it's a tale of two stories. You know, people are getting better and better at mass producing batteries and EVs. So the, that component of the cost is continuing to drop. On the other hand, there's so much pressure on these same commodities that those commodity prices are volatile and still trending upwards. So right now they're, they're somewhat counteracting each other. Um, I do think in the long term we're going to, to see that same dynamic continuing for, for quite a few years to come. So I, I, I wish we could get to even cheaper EVs. You know, we're doing our part in that by trying to help reduce those raw materials costs by recycling more of them. But uh, it's going to be a long transition where we go from maybe 2 3% of our fleet being electric to 80%, 90% over the coming decades. And California, as Phil had reported, is now seeing Model Y as one of its top sellers. JB, thanks again for your time and for joining us. I have a question. I went to trade in or, or buy a new iPhone the other day, and my old one had pretty significant trade-in value, which surprised me. Um, and I, I joked, well, I, you know, I don't want to turn it in. You know, my data's on it. Can I, can I pound it with a sledgehammer? And they said, you can do whatever you want to it as long as you don't hurt the battery. And is, are companies like yours the reason why that battery is the most important um, and valuable part of that iPhone and the reason why they're, they're worth so much right now? Well, there, there are a lot of valuable materials in that, that old phone or that old uh, you know, electronic device that, that so many people have. And you know, part of our vision is to you know, build the processes, make them very sustainable and scale them so we can recover that value, take advantage of it, and deliver it back to the customers, uh, some of what you're seeing. Um, you know, the customers can benefit at end of life after owning the product. But the battery is, is a safety issue as well. So, yeah, you don't want to smash your battery with a sledgehammer. You can <laughs> definitely cause a, a fire or a short circuit there. I, I don't own a sledgehammer, but I could certainly come up with ways, <laughs> I, I guess, drive over it with a car or something. Um, let me turn, JB, since we have you, and just ask you about Tesla for a moment. Um, shares had collapsed into the end of last year. They're on this massive run right now. But people are wondering... Even as we get these accolades about Model Y top-selling car in California, if it's kind of becoming just another automaker, um, could you just weigh in on the valuation of Tesla and what you think the potential is for this industry, which does see saturation, which is starting to feel a little bit less sexy, frankly, now that it's gone more mainstream? Well, I'm not connected with Tesla anymore, but... Uh... You know, I, I do think Tesla is, is more than just a car maker. You know, they have obviously a, a huge range of different products and I think a really exciting roadmap ahead of them. Um, you know, there, there's not always complete logic in, in the, the public markets and how people value and price things, but, um, you know, I, I believe Tesla has an incredible future ahead of it. And uh, we're really just getting started in this whole transition. 
even though the cycles of incredible excitement and, and, and maybe you know a little more you know caution um, kind of go up and down, I think it's useful to look at what percent of the cars on the road today are actually electric. You know that. That to me is really what highlights how much more market growth is ahead of companies like Tesla and others as they electrify.